for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, tonight we're grateful to Thee for the privilege of coming again to Thee and to Thy presence to offer our thanksgiving and to worship Thee in the spirit of the resurrected Lord Jesus. We pray that Your blessings will be with us tonight and will save all the laws called back the backslider, Father. And we pray a special blessing for the sick and needy tonight, that you'll heal them, every one. Send the Lord Jesus to our midst, Lord, for we ask in his name. Amen. Good evening, Christian friends. I'm happy to be here again tonight in the Philadelphian church to greet you lovely people in this warm welcome of Christian fellowship. And may the Lord bless us as we fellowship for a few moments around his written word. And may the Holy Spirit take the things of God and deliver them to every heart just as you have need of them. Now, I'm sure that people doesn't come and stand up and jam around in the churches just to be seen. You come because you love him. And I'm trusting that God will send you away tonight, not empty. He never sends anyone empty who comes to him. And he'll send you away with a full heart of joy, light-footed, and going down the street rejoicing and praising God as you move along. Now, that can be done if we'll take our right attitude towards him. We come to see him and to love him and to worship him, then God is obligated to give us them things which we desire. And he will withhold no good thing from them that walk upright before him. Just remember that. His promise is, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you will, and it will be given unto you. What a promise, unfailing promise. Now, tomorrow night, the Lord willing, or one night before I leave, I would like to speak on the infallibility of the Word of God. And if free people can ever get placed and their faith centered, not upon present situations, but upon what God has said about it. If you can remember that no matter what comes or goes, and how impossible it seems to be, yet God's Word will take its place every time. See, in the face of every difficulty, nothing, nothing can take its place. It has preeminence because it's none other than God Himself in a spoken word, and it has to come to pass. In all my days I have tried solemnly to keep the people on the Word of God, yeah. for that was his promise to me. He told me he would bless me wherever I went, and it would prosper, and the work of the Lord should grow, but that the Word, that I must be sure that the Word was first in everything. That's what I've tried to do, try to keep humble, keep down to a place where I can keep myself yielded to him, to hear his voice when he speaks. And one thing sure, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. That's right. No matter how much I learn of his word or how much I would l love his people, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, that whenever the time comes that he'll call me from among the dead, that I can come forth to life everlasting. Tonight being a night for to prayer for the sick, we won't linger long on the Word. And I believe that we have a night or two more along in the service that I'll be speaking to you. Now, Brother Joseph himself is a scholar and a, a real minister, and you, you have good preachers. And I always wish that I was able, when I hear those abled man to Bible expositors, how they can really explain the Word. I've always wanted to, to do that. 
But I, I just can't do it, you see, because I was just, it's not my makeup. But I admire those brothers who can do it. But the most of the people comes to my meeting is not to hear the teaching, is to see the manifestation of the supernatural. And that's, the, I'm too illiterate, unlearned, uneducated to be able to be a, a Bible explainer. But I, I, the only thing that I, I'm glad I know him. Yeah. And then in that, in my humble way among humble people, uh, it brings a, a reality of knowing the re it confirms what the expositor is preaching. The, it's a confirmation of what the real Bible teacher teaches. The Holy Spirit comes and confirms what he says is the truth. So one is the ear, one is the mouth, one is an eye, but we're all one body. Isn't that right? All right. It's strange. And reading, taking his word of how that God, way back before the world ever began, how he began to see the thing unfold. And know then, God didn't make a choice then. God could not, uh, could say the word of predestinate. The word predestinate, as I've always said, is not a good word to use to the public because predestinate means perhaps to, to, to predestine something to happen. But God could predestinate by foreknowledge. He foreknew what would be, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. But being infant and God, he could predestinate and foretell by foreknowledge. As well stated, predestination looks back to foreknowledge, and foreknowledge looks on to destiny. See? And God in the beginning could see all things the way it would happen. Therefore, he could tell this will be this way, and that will be that way, and this will be this way, and that that way, because he, by foreknowledge, he wasn't willing that the left side would be wrong, that this to be. He didn't want that to happen, but being God, he knew it would happen that way. So, therefore, he could foretell what would be, and he knew the end from the beginning. Isn't that wonderful? And to think that every born-again child of God tonight has that privilege and assurance to know that God knoweth his own. That God knoweth his own. Last night preaching on Jacob's ladder. And the Lord willing, one night this week I want to speak on the expansion of time. So or spanning the time rather. And how that in the heavens God had his the ladder hooked to his throne and had it hooked on the earth in his son, Christ Jesus, and put us in between them. <laughs> There's no way of getting away, that's all. He just got And then besides, to be sure that we have a nice, comfortable trip, you know, going down to Mexico a few days ago, the Pan American Airlines, they say, we're making everything just as comfortable as we can. We want you to enjoy yourself. I was riding along over top of the mountains down in Mexico. What a bumpy ride. I thought, well, the airplane company couldn't help that. That's just some uh, of the elements of the earth, the heat and so forth, are driving up the wind and, and the air currents in the mountains. But God has promised, and God can control all of the bumpy places, you see. So he sent a great company of angels to ascend and descend on our road as we go back up the ladder. And did you ever notice? It's only a one-way street, too. <laughs> no wrecks. We're going one way, not returning. We're going up the ladder altogether. Always oh, wonderful. Now, the meetings are, we continue next week, go right straight from here, home. I was trying to talk to Brother Joel's about it. Let me close the service Sunday afternoon because God's been in Louisville, Kentucky at 8 o'clock Monday morning. And I, I couldn't do it. And you talk about being a Swede. He's a Jewish. <laughs> he, <laughs> Paul came out of something. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I perhaps have to take a plane home that night in order to be there and let Brother Woods and them go on with the cars. 
And then be home Monday and Tuesday. We leave for for Columbia, uh, South Carolina. And then from there to Spindale. And from Spindale to Charlotte, North Carolina. Just right straight along, five and six nights along. And then from there to Anchorage, Alaska. And back at the Cato Tabernacles of June 11th to the 15th, and then to Minneapolis on the 17th. And from there on, I, it's Brother Oregon Bright and Brother Moore's telling you tricks between of what to go overseas or what. But I like to want to go overseas or anywhere like that. I like to go when a vision tells me to go so I can go in the name of the Lord. Amen. And I feel assured of that. Now for a little scripture lesson just to teach for a few moments, and um, then we'll call the prayer line. Now I think in our prayer line is when God teaches. Don't you think so? God does the teaching. And so we're anxious for him to teach us. Now in St. Luke, the 24th chapter, and the 31st unto the 33rd verse, I wish to read a little text and for a lesson tonight. And it's uh, beautifully arranged because it's in a right season. It's on the resurrection. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scriptures? Now my prayer is that that same person will open to us the scriptures tonight. It's, a, it's a, a very timely scripture reading because we're again in the resurrection, in the Easter season. And I think that one of the greatest scriptures that's more neglected than any scripture I know of being preached on is the ascension of the Lord Jesus what he did after his resurrection. Now, he did not sit down on the tomb after his resurrection because his work wasn't completed. It wasn't finished. And the ones at the grave that morning were forbidden to even touch him. But that night, they were bidden to come feel his hand. He forbid his mother to touch him, said, I have not yet ascended unto my Father, my God, and yours. And he had not yet, he would only ready to do his great high priest work at that time. He had just been anointed. And when he was here on earth, he lived the life and made himself a little lower than angels in order to take away sin. Just think that who he was he was the Logos that came from God in the beginning. He was the Word of God. He was the angel of God that was with the children of Israel in the wilderness. He was the great supernatural of heaven, none other than Jehovah himself, and came down here on the earth and became a man, not only a man, but became the servant of man and took upon himself a make of no reputation, but became a foot washer, and he went to the lowest city in the world, Jericho, and was so low to the smallest man of the city, had to climb up in a tree to look down at him. And God raised him up and put him so high above ever heaven until he has to stoop over to look to heaven. That's what God did for him. So if you want to be exalted, humble yourself. And if you exalt yourself, you'll be brought down low. And I, I think of him, that when he had risen from the dead that morning, that he was then had his own blood as a high priest, and he went beyond the veils to every sphere Satan in the times past 
had man blocked off from heaven. He could not get in con contact with heaven. But when Jesus took his, his blood, the first veil he rent was the veil of death and the veil of the grave, the veil in the temple, and then the veil of sickness, the veil of fear, and every veil that there was an unveiled God to man went way and above the heavens of heaven and was seated on the right hand of God and sat down yeah. as a finished work. Right, right. right. All above. And there he opened up a channel that God used to come down to the corners of heaven and talk to mankind in the Garden of Eden. And Satan by sin had blocked them. But the great high priest with his anointed, with his blood, went through every veil and ripped her open and cleared out the skies again that God and man could be father and son and commune again with one another. What a marvelous thing. All the patriarchs of the New Testament as they died, for instance, Stephen's when he was stoned him to death, the veils were all open to his precious eyes filled with blood. But he said, as he knelt on the ground, he said, I see heaven open, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. St. Paul, the veil was open, and he seen Jesus, the aged seer, out on the Isle of Patmos, being exiled, out on the Alcatraz, as it was, a, a little island out in the Aegean Sea, about 15 miles around, a rocky island that held criminals, and he was out there for the preaching of the Word. And there on that day, he was sitting on the Lord's day, perhaps looking out over the water, God loving his seer. And he said, I heard the voice of many waters, and when I voice of trumpet, and when I turned to see, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and one standing in the midst of them, likened to the Son of Man, glorified state. Look at his eyes, no more filled with tears. They could even pierce like the sun in the middle of the day. No more nail scars in his feet. They were like brass tried in a fire. He was free from all of that. He was glorified. And his hands wasn't scarred more. And he was in the midst of his churches, a blessing. This wonderful Easter morning, Jesus was alive and among the people. What a type it is today that being on the Easter again, Jesus is risen from the dead. And as he went about, many of his dear people, people who loved him, people who believed in him, didn't know that he was alive. And so is it today. There's many good, honest-hearted Christian people who doesn't realize that Jesus Christ is alive and among us today. That's right. They fail to recognize that. They believe, oh, he died for my sins. They accept that. And he rose again and he's up in heaven somewhere. But he isn't. He's right here on earth in the form of the Holy Ghost. I'll be with you to the end of the world. Not I'll be up in heaven looking down at you. I'll be with you. One place that I'll be in you to the end of the world. He'll be with us, even in us, to the end of the world. I, not someone else, I will be to the end of the world. I is a personal pronoun. And I'll be with you to the end of the world. And many people today doesn't realize that. Only those who have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life and has been born again by the Holy Ghost is a witness of the resurrection. The Bible said no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. You might know it by the way of word. You might know it by the way of the pastor or by your mother or some other testimony. You, but you don't know it yourself until personally he has witnessed to you that he is raised from the dead and lives in your heart. What a beautiful picture. And now these disciples were taught that they were not educated. 
They might not have known all about algebra. They might not have known all about the geographics of the world. But there's one thing they did know. They knew him. Not long ago, I was talking to my good friend a few weeks ago, William Booth Cliburn, a very clever scholar, one of the best I ever talked to. And we were riding along together, and Brother Booth said to me, he was saying some kind of a great big word, you know, if you know him, how I can speak him, and preaching seven different languages. And me, a little dummy, was set by his side. And I, he said, uh, we're going to use different Greek words and so forth. I said, Brother Booth, the Lord hasn't given me the gift of interpretation. I said, I, I just don't know what you're talking about. He said, well, you little sinners that you don't know your Bible. <laughs> and I said, I don't know the book, but I know the writer and the author real well. <laughs> and I said, Brother Booth Clever, to know the book is not life. To know the catechism is not life, or to know the Bible is not life, but to know Him is life. And I said, I know Him. And he jerked your bump my head against his a little bit. You know how he cuts up like that? He said, I just have to love you anyhow. <laughs> so uh, uh, he was a scholarly man. But these disciples might not have known all the ethics of the church. They might not have been polished scholars. But they knew him. That's the main thing, Amen. to know him. As Paul said, to know him in the power of his resurrection. That's the way I want to know him. I'm so happy tonight to have put that experience in the past. One day, about 23 years ago, I knew him in the power of his resurrection. It changed my life. As Paul said, the life I once lived. <laughs> He lives a different kind now. And every person that's ever come in contact with the Lord Jesus Christ knows that that experience is in the past. They know him now in the power of his resurrection. What a heartbroken time it was in Jerusalem. Poor Mary had brought up a little innocent girl. The Holy Ghost overshadowed this child had been born. And how could that man and his worried disciples Peter said, I believe I'll just go fishing. And they'd seen how could a man that they stood by the grave and seen a man that had been dead four days come out of the grave. Yeah. <laughs> well, four days' time, the nose just fell in on a car. Yeah. Sure. And there a man with his nose fell in, the skin worms crawling in, and the Bible said, he stinketh. Shows the corruption that already set in. How could a man stand there tired and weary, dust all over him from the journey, and say, Lazarus, come forth? And a man that had been dead four days stood on his feet and lived, talked, and eat. How could a man that could call the dead to life hang out her on the cross, cruelly mocked, made fun of, spit on, hanging there with great big spit hanging all over his face and thorns on his head and scream for mercy and die a horrible death. How could a man do that? See, it's not known to human beings. God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. What do you think his disciples thought of in that day? Jesus was a seer. Not only a seer, but he was the king of the seers. And they, he, he had power. He could discern the thoughts of the people. He could foretell things that would be. And he said, I'll do nothing till the Father shows me. And then to see a man that had that power that could say to a man coming up in his audience, Behold an Israelite, in whom there's no God. He said, When did you know me, Rabbi? I said, Poor Philip calls. You're around four or five miles behind the hill here. I saw you when he was under that tree. How could a man who sat by a well one day and a woman come out of the city, a prostitute, and came out of the city to get some water? And he said, bring me a drink. She said, you have nothing to draw with. It's not customary for the Jews to ask Samaritan such and carry a conversation with a woman and say, go get your husband. She said, I have none. I said, that's right, you got five. One you have now. 
How could a man that could see the future and things like that, the power that he had, how could a man thought Peter, that when we was there and broke and didn't have any money and he lifted up his eyes for a few minutes and prayed, said, Peter, go cast the hook down into the lake and pick up that fish, look in his mouth and get a coin and give it to him. <laughs> My, how could a man that could take five little pieces of fish and five biscuits and two pieces of fish and break them and feed 5,000? Not just wiggly fish, but cooked fish. What did he, how did he do it? What kind of an atom did he turn loose there? What kind of a power did he have? Remember, 5,000 people out of two fish. Took these little fellows and broke it off and hand out, broke off another piece, and every time he'd break it off, another piece would be grown on. Cooked fish, already cooked and fried and crisco, ready to go. Ready! Broke it off. Amen. What a person! Not break off, raise up some wheat and go cook it and things like that, the regular procedure, but could bypass all of that. Just break off cooked bread and hand it out to him, the brown crust on it. To take it needed. <laughs> oh my! How could that man stand with a rag around his face and a cruel, balking, infidel soldier? Smacking on top of the head with a reed and saying, Now, if you are a prophesier, tell us who hit you. How could a man like that do that? Yeah. How could it ever be? Yeah. How could that man be screaming for mercy on the cross who had showed mercy? How could a man who could raise the dead die like a between thieves, like a malefactor on the cross? How could a man with all that power at his disposal hang to the cross like that and look up into the heavens and hear them rallying Jews say, If thou art the Christ, come down off the cross and we'll believe you. If you are a prophet, tell us who hits you on the head with this stick and we'll believe you. All the powers to do it. Watch. That same one was met in the beginning of his ministry with the same devil and said, If you are the Son of God, perform a miracle before my eyes and turn this bread, this rocks into bread. I'll believe you then. See? You don't cater to the devil. That's the same devil that says, You know, Mr. Jones is down here on the street, and he's been a cripple for years. Go down and heal him, you divine healers, and I'll believe in you. Oh, wow. The same old devil. Jesus said, I do nothing till the Father shows me. He told him once, and that settled it. I just finished it. I just do as the Father tells me. That's the Father's will. But how could he die? While they was going along the road, they were so discouraged. Peter got his fishing pole and put it on his back, a can of worms, and started down to the sea. He said, I just guess I'll go fishing. Cleopas and his friends said, Come on, let's go on back to Jerusalem. We're going back to our city where we come from, over to Emmaus. But I don't know, I can't make it out. How could a person like that? And today, God's servants is misunderstood the same way. That's right. The true gospel is misunderstood the same way. Well, if God is God, said the great high up, how does he deal with Pentecostals? Them people down there hardly knows where one meal from the other is coming from. Well, if he was God, he'd surely come up to us. <laughs> no, it's you got to come to him. Amen. That's right. See, the same thing. And even his disciples didn't understand him. He talked a double talk. They never could understand him because he talked of heaven. He talked of things they couldn't understand. Right at, the right at the last, they said, Lo, now we believe and know that no man has to teach you, for God shows you what to do. Jesus said, Do you now believe? After all this time, do you now believe? But how could that divine person, see, they failed to know the Word of God? So there was nothing to do but to fulfill their desire to know. So as they turned down the road, walking along, disheartened, or oh, some women had been up the grave, and they said he wasn't there, but they didn't believe that, so they just went on down the road, so discouraged. And if you notice, it's when you are discouraged, that's when the devil can really pour it on. 
That's when he gets it. If you come to the church and say, well, I don't know. I don't know whether I'll ever get any better or not. I've been prayed for twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. You might as well go home. That's all. But when you can cast that aside, God don't want you to be frowning. God wants you to be happy. Hey. The human heart was made to be happy. Hey. Weary will cause cancer. Temper will cause cancer. Don't never be upset. Just walk in his love. Amen. Knowing that you're walking in him and nothing can harm you. There's nothing can harm you. There's neither power, things present, things future. Nothing can separate us from him. We're in him. And we never come in by our own will. He by choice elected us and brought us into him. Amen. Amen. So it's his business to take care of what he's stuck himself. No man can pluck him from my father's hands because he's the greatest of all of them. Amen. It's the father that takes care of it. Who's got any more power than God? So what kind of a power you got over you to take care of you? The whole powers that create the universe. Amen. The toughest solar system. And blue like that and every star went to its place. Sure. And he watches over you. Amen. That's the kind of a father we have. So, as they went along down the road, said, Oh, Cleopius said his friend, I, I tell you, I I'm discouraged this morning. But how could that man ever die? Cleopius, he died. I've seen him die. I've seen the sun go down. All the stars refused to shine. I know he died. I seen that soldier ram the spirit through his heart. And he died. And I know he's dead. And how could he do it? We trusted in him that he would be the great Messiah that should take the we mold all of our spears in the pruning hooks and go out and the Romans would be finished and the world would be tramped down and he'd rule it with a rod of iron and he'd sit on David's throne and there he is laying up there in the grave. How can it be? They just couldn't understand it. While they were thinking all these things, a stranger walked out. That's the reason. That's when you want to get when you go to thinking about him. That's when he appeared. They were talking about him when he appeared, and that's the reason maybe he doesn't appear to so many of us. We talk too much about other things instead of about Jesus. Maybe we're talking about trading cars. Something else for the washing. What kind of soap powder do you use? Listen to the radio and some kind of nonsense. That's the reason he doesn't appear. Amen. If we just keep our minds on him, let the meditation of my heart. <laughs> he told Joshua, he said, meditate on these things day and night. Amen. David said, I'll bind them on my bedpost. <laughs> yes. Sure. Let them stay in, inside of you and think of them. Meditate upon him. And that's when he appears. Do you ever notice how the angel of the Lord comes? Of the evening at 3 o'clock when I go in, I close everything out, don't let no one come in, and just sit there and read the Word and yield myself until I know he's there. I can feel it when he's coming. He comes in, and I know he's there. Oh, my. That's the way you do. That's the way the disciples did. They were with one place and one accord in an upper room. And they were all up there praising him. And all of a sudden, he came in. That's the way he does it. So these people were going along the road, uh, uh, meditating on him, talking about him, and he stepped out. I do. He said, why are you so sorrowful this morning? My, you look terrible. Look what a frown on your face. You being Jews, why do you look like that? Why aren't you smiling? Why, they said, are you just a stranger around here? <laughs> I guess not. He made it. <laughs> he created the heavens and earth. How would he be a stranger? He said, are you just a stranger? You know, there's, there's many times that people don't realize that Christ is near them like that. So he said, Jesus of Nazareth, who we hope to be the deliverer of Israel and so forth, 
And they crucified him up there. Oh, you ought to have been there. He died a horrible death. You ought to have heard him. Oh, it was so pitiful to see who we thought to be the Messiah dying there. And they pierced his heart, put him in the grave and buried him. And then we had some women down at the grave, the gardener, some of them took him away. And there they are seeing him. We, we just don't know what to do anymore. Oh, we're so confused. <laughs> That's a good thing. Jesus said, are you so slow at heart? <laughs> And watch, when Jesus appears, he goes straight to the Scripture. He said, don't you know that the Scriptures must be fulfilled? Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. I feel awful good right now. <laughs> don't you know the Scriptures has got to be fulfilled? Yeah. And when people say they are, oh, it's a mental telepathy. Oh, it's nothing to it. It's just a bunch of holy rollers. Don't you know the scriptures must be fulfilled? God has to appear in this last days and do the things he's doing now. It's to fulfill the scriptures. He said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. And remember... He said there'd be a former rain and a latter rain. Yes. And in the latter rain, both former and latter would come together. A double portion. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Then if we see what the former rain produced, how much more will the latter rain produce? When God pours out his spirit, there'll be signs and wonders take place. As I was speaking not long ago, as your beloved pastor published it, when omnipotent speaks, miracles happen. It has to it has to. Why, well, he said, don't you know the scriptures? The scriptures, oh, maybe today they try to place it somewhere else. Say, oh, well, that was in the days past, but the Bible doesn't read it that way. The thing, the proof of the pudding is the eating thereof. My mama used to say, the eating of the pudding. Now they say the days of miracles is past. Some fellow said to me not long ago, said, Brother Branham, the days of miracles is past. I said, as far as you know. <laughs> but we know different. Oh, Christ, when well, he was back there, he was the phenomenal of that day. But I said, he is today. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, a little while and the world will see me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you. In you unto the end of the world. Don't you know the scriptures has got to be fulfilled? If the great Ecclesiastes of this day will not accept it, God's able of these stones to rise to the God will take the poor, ignorant, and illiterate. But the scripture must be fulfilled. It's got to be fulfilled. And he promised he'd shake again, not only the heavens, not only the earth, but the heavens also. And we're living in the day to see it done. Jesus said, these works that I do, you'll do also. The scripture must be fulfilled. He promised in the last days that, that he'd send forth prophets, he would send forth his spirit, he would send forth all these things in the last day. The scriptures got to be fulfilled. Now we have a great ministry out, the ministry of the forerunning of the coming of this ministry that's coming on now. John the Baptist went forth preaching repentance, and he really preached it. He shook the political world that day. John did. He went forth. He was anointed with the spirit of Elijah. And he went forth and preached. He didn't do any miracles at all. He never said anything against them. But he went preaching. And he brought the whole nominal world. He shook them because all the regions around about come out to hear him. And immediately after his ministry got on his go real good, there come the ministry of the Lord Jesus in performing miracles. Both of it's in the world today. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the great climax is at hand. The great warfare between the devil and God is going on, and the scene is being set for the final front lines, Amen. where the, the clash will come and God will reign and rule, for the Lamb was with them, overcome them, for he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. 
and he will ride down every opposition. Amen. Notice, they walked along, they didn't know him. And he began to explain to them, oh, could you just imagine how they listened along the road. Then when they got down to the place where just about getting sundown, they come into a little place called Emmaus, and along there's a little hotel, a little restaurant on the side of the road, maybe a little doby house. Much doby was in the lands in those days. Yes, it is. And then we see this little restaurant sitting there, and they begin to listen to that fellow. They said, say, I kind of like the way he explains that. He said, come and abide with us. Now, first, he act like he's going to pass right on by. Now, a lot of times he does that. That's right. Some of you people here tonight with cancer, the doctor says, can't do no more. Heart trouble, the doctor says, can't do no more. Crippled, the doctor says, you can't walk. It seems like he's just going to pass you by, but he's not. Uh, get the lesson. But they constrained him. Said, come in and abide with us. That's what it is. That's the idea. He knew he's going in all the time. But he wants you to ask him. <laughs> Amen. That's your part to ask him. Said, come and abide with us all the days far spent. It is, isn't it? Come and abide with us. Well, he said, maybe I'd better just go on. Oh, no, you mustn't go on. Oh, we love your words. You explained the scripture to us. So we, you must come and abide with us. So when they got him in, inside, now that's it. Get him inside of your heart. And then as soon as the door was closed, the outside world shut off, then... He opened their eyes. And that's what he'll do to you if you'll ever let him come in, shut the world outside, shut all the unbelief off, then he'll open your eyes. If you'll only come in. Let him come in. Bring him into your house. Bring him into your heart. Bring him into you. And when you do, then say, now look, in the meeting tonight, I'm going to shut all my unbelief outside. Now listen close and watch me. I'm going to shut all the unbelief outside, all the superstitions I ever had, all the difference I ever had in my life, I'm going to shut them all outside. And I'm going to say, Jesus, you come into my house now. Come into here with me. And when you do, close the door and say, now, Satan, you can't come in tonight. I'm having Jesus here. I'm going to entertain him. Now, Satan is unbelief. So he said, I'll just shut the door off now. Huh? And you, I'm in here with you, precious Jesus. And then they went over to the table and sat down. I can imagine seeing Cleopius sitting in a chair saying, Sir, I'll tell you, I never heard the Scriptures explained like you did. Jesus sat down. And still, they didn't know him. So when they got in, sat down, Perhaps a waiter come in, the little waitress, and said, What you have? And bread and olives. And so then when they brought the bread around, they passed it over to Jesus. Now watch. He had been a teacher, a real teacher, probably not much more than what the rest of them had taught, but the subject he was on about how Christ must suffer, enter into his glory, all these things, it interests them because they were interested in the subject. Now, if you're interested in the subject tonight, any enlightenment on the Word of God on this subject of divine healing will enlighten you. You're interested to hear it. Anything that God can do for you will enlighten you, help you, spirit you up. So they sat down. Now watch. Closely. Then when they got all seated, Jesus picked up the bread and done something with it the way he did when he was with them before the crucifixion. He did it in the way that he used to do it. And when he did something in the way that he used to do it, they said no one else could do it but him. That's him. That's our Lord. You see it? Now may he come tonight into this church. 
May we cloud out all of our theology and our church energy and our little boundaries that separate us from one another and from God. Let's draw the curtains around and say, I cast away all my unbelief. I'm going to listen. I want to find out what Jesus did when he was here on earth. And if I can see him do amongst his people here the same things he did when he was here on earth, he's still the resurrected Lord Jesus. He made himself known that way. That in his resurrection, he did the same things he did before the crucifixion. You still say amen if you do. He did the same thing after the resurrection that he did before the crucifixion. And they said, it's him. He truly has risen from the dead. Oh, my. They've been all day walking on the road, but there's just a few minutes getting back to Jerusalem. Oh, they said, yes, he is alive. We've seen him. We know that he is alive. Amen. How do you know? He's done the same thing that he did when he was alive. We know it's him. Only he can do it. That's all. No one else can do it but him. And we see the way he did it. And that's the way he did it. When we, you remember when we was down there eating that time? The way he took that bread and how what happened when he broke those loaves out of that day and fed the thousands? Yes. Oh, that's the same thing he did then. I know the way he did it. He did something in an it was. And you know, all the time they was running just as hard as they could go, he was right along with them. <laughs> and they didn't see it. And Thomas raised up and said, you know, your story sounds pretty good. Right. But said, you know, I'll have to see it myself. Said, I'll have to put my fingers in his hands. Jesus said, here they are. <laughs> he was with them. For he promised he'd be with them. He promised they'd do the same things that he did to the end of the world. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That's one commission. That's right. Billy Graham, Jack Schuler, many of the other great men are doing that. And it's a conjunction. These signs shall follow that. <laughs> them that believe. The scripture must be fulfilled. It's got to come to pass. And if we turn it down, God will raise up somebody else to do it. Right. We are here. May God open our eyes tonight to realize that Jesus is risen from the dead. 2,000 years practically has passed since his resurrection, but he's right here in this building tonight. Just the same as he was in that little restaurant at Emmaus. God grant that he'll do something tonight right here in your midst like he did back there. How many is in here that never been in one of the meetings before? Let's see your hand. Raise your hand. Ah, quite a number. All right. Let's find out just for a moment now what he did. What could he do that would make us know? Now, remember, his corporal body is the high priest that's sitting before the throne of God with the blood making intercession. His spirit, called the Holy Spirit, is here living with us in our spirit, doing the same thing he's carrying on the ministry that he started. And he said, I'll be with you to the end of the world. Things that I do shall you also unto the end of the world. Now that's down to the newcomers. Find out what he did. What did he do? Did he claim that he was a great healer? Bring me this man. Let me show you how I heal him. That wasn't God. That wasn't Christ. No, no. He said, I can't do nothing in myself. He said, not me that doeth the works. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. All right. Now notice, then one day in his ministry, a man went and got another and come to him. And when he come to him, he said, uh, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no God. Philip went and got Nathaniel. He said, When did you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you, when he was over there under the tree, I saw you. Ah, did he do that? Yes. The woman at the well, many other places, they caught him one time. 
And he said to him, <clears throat> back in a man had his, his talk, went through a great crowd of people who were lame, blind, withered, halt, waterhead babies, withered, afflicted. And Jesus come walking right through them. Everyone, just a few days before there, a woman slipped up and touched his garment, run out into the audience, and somewhere stood. Jesus looked around and said, Who touched me? Why, the woman and everybody else said, Not me. Not me. Everyone denied. Not me. Said, uh, some, Peter said, Touched you? Well, I said, Everybody's touched you. He said, But, but I got weak. Uh, virtue's gone from me. Strength gone, gone from me. Somebody touched me. He kept looking around. Found the woman. He said, Now she had a blood issue and said, Thy faith has healed thee. And she come and fell down at his feet and confessed everything. Now, if that was Jesus of that day, it's got to be Jesus of this day. If Jesus could do that in that day, he's got to do it in this day if he's the resurrected Lord. Now, this dear old black back Bible, I believe it with all my heart. And I believe, if it isn't true, then it's wrong. I wouldn't have nothing to do with it. But I believe that every word of it is inspired, and every word of it is God's own word. And I believe that the right mental attitude towards any of those divine promises will bring them to pass. Now, I believe he has risen from the dead. And when he was questioned down there that day, when he went through, he found a man, the Father showed him a vision. He went out and seen a man laying on a pallet. He crossed through blind people, lame people, halt people, withered people, laying there by the pool by the hundred. The scripture says so, St. John 5. And he went on past them until he's looking to see where that vision was. He's seen a man laying on a pallet. He had been that way for, I believe, several years, about 28 years. It wasn't going to kill him. It was a retarded disease, maybe prostrate, maybe it was a lung trouble or something. It wasn't going to kill him. He healed him, told him to pick up his bed, go on to his house. And he did. The Jews found him, questioned him, brought Jesus to the courts and questioned him. They questioned it today. Why don't you heal so-and-so? Why don't you heal so-and-so? Listen to Jesus in St. John 5:19. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. I only do as my Father shows me to do. I can do nothing in myself. But now look, Jesus in him was all the fullness of the Godhead bodily was in him. And that woman, what did she do? What did others do? It was their faith that touched him and got the glory from God through Christ as they ministered, as he ministered, they by their faith touched him. Well, the Bible said that after his death, burial, and resurrection, he is now a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Is that right? Your faith can still touch him. And if it can touch him, then he can represent himself here on earth again among us by one of us. Is that right? And God ascended on high, led captive, captive, give gifts unto men. And he has said in the church, first apostles, second prophets, after that teachers, evangelists, and pastors. Is that right? God set them in the church for the perfecting of the church, that the people might know that he is not dead, that he lives on and will forever. And he's in his church today doing his high priest work, working through his people as they yield themselves to him for the same purpose. And I believe the same Jesus Christ that rose on the first glad Easter morning is alive yet today with his people. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, open the eyes of the people now. We have quoted this wonderful Easter story in our poor, simple, humble way. But with our hearts, we believe with all that is within us that that is the truth. We have seen you prove yourself over and over, time after time. And we know that you are Jesus Christ, God's Son. And we pray humbly and sincerely and with all of our heart that you will bless this people tonight. Now I have given them a proposition, Father. And I pray that you will manifest the Son, the Lord Jesus, here at the platform tonight and out there in the audience as we yield our soul and spirit to you as vessels 
as I yield mine to you for a mouthpiece, yielding my eyes for the vision, yielding my mind for your word, they yield their hearts and spirit to receive. I pray, Father, that you'll work among your people, and if there should be unbelievers in the midst, may they tonight be convinced that the true story of the Easter story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is still true today, and Jesus still lives. We ask it in his name. Amen. The Lord add his blessings to his word. Now, how many here now, just to this, this is your first night, we're glad to have you, but how many here, your first timer, that will say this to God? Now, as the man has said that you have risen from the dead, and you're here not in a corporal body, because that, when that returns to the earth again, we'll all go with him. But his corporal body is sitting there, but his spiritual body is in his church. And by that same spirit, we're all baptized into his body. See? And if he will come here on this platform tonight before your eyes, not in a corporal body, but in a spiritual body, but will manifest the same things that he did when he was at Emmaus and here on earth, will you accept him and believe him? If you will, raise up your hand. Say, I will believe. God bless you. <clears throat> now, we want to call some people up here to platform to be prayed for. And they give out some prayer cards a while ago, and that's the way we line the people up. That don't mean that these people are going to be healed. It doesn't mean that. It only means that those people are going to be standing here. The reason I do that, last night, we had, didn't have a chance to give out prayer cards. So I just called the people. The Holy, excuse me and God forgive me, I didn't mean to say that that way. The Holy Spirit spoke to the people out in the audience. Yeah, that's right. See? Sometimes by grace it'll do that. Now, at, tonight, we give our prayer card, so we'll start some people on the platform, and then we will, you just yield yourself to the Spirit of God and believe. I don't care if you're a Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, whatever you are, if you're God's child, yield yourself. Now, I wonder this just in the audience. This is brazing. I don't mean to be that way. But is there a sinner here? It says, I've been to church and I've read the Bible and so forth, but I, I've never been born again. And so therefore, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he, he, he'll never enter into the kingdom of heaven. But if I can see that take place before my own eyes, I will accept Jesus Christ as my Savior tonight. If you'll do it, raise your hand. Uh, well, God bless you. God bless you. That's fine. God bless you. God bless you. That's fine. God bless you. That, up the balcony. God bless you. That's, God bless you. Someone else? I will accept him and never have a doubt no more in my life. God bless you, sir, over there. That, God bless you, lady, back there, the young lady. Raise her hand. Someone else say, I will. Look, friends, we're all mortal. And it may be before morning that some of us in here will have to meet in his presence. We don't know just how many more times our heart's going to beat. That's right. I've been right in the meeting, and people die right in the meeting. That's right. I was in Africa. A woman crossed across the platform, a good, healthy-looking woman, and the Holy Spirit told her she had a cyst on the ovary. She witnessed that was right. Said she'd been to a, a doctor a few days ago and told him what the doctor was and what his name was. That's right. You say, does God? Yes, sir. When Simon come, he said, your name's Simon, but you'll be called Peter from henceforth. See? Certainly he does. He knows you. So he said, told her who she was, but said, now you prepare for death, for you're not going to live but a little bit. The woman walked right around before around a hundred and something thousand people and sat down and said to her husband, did you hear what he told me? And she said, oh! And there she was, gone. And that quick, see? See? I can't heal. I can only say what he tells me to, see? I'm not the healer. Your healing is already finished. Every person in here has been healed for 1,900 years. Every sinner's been saved for 1,900 years. The only thing you have to do is accept it as your personal property, what Jesus gave to you. Now, did you give them one to another? One to All right, we'll call from one then. Who has prayer card number one? Would you just raise up your hand? Look, it's a little flat card. It's got my picture on it. And over on the back, it's got a, a letter and a number. 
and it's got number one. Who has that number one? Would you raise? Would you come over here, lady? Number two, would you raise up your hand? Who has number two? All right, number two. Someone raised number three. Number three. Would some ever who has prayer card number three? Would you raise your hand? If you put up your hand so we can see you, that's thank you. Number four, raise up your hand. Four, all right. Number five, would you raise up your hand? Number five, number six. I didn't see number six's hand. Number seven, eight, nine, ten. See, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's see now how they get out and how. Now watch, maybe somebody can't get up. If their numbers call, if you can't get up, you whisper to somebody by if you can't raise your hand, and they'll, they'll, they'll bring you. All right? Let's see now how many we get if we get these lined up. All right. That's fine. Now, now, if, you want some more, Sandy? Looks like we should stand some more. Fifty. Well, uh, let's, let's leave it. Let's leave it lay there. Then, just like that for a few minutes. All right. We'll try to get these through first. Then. How many in here are sick and doesn't have a prayer card, and you want Jesus to heal you tonight? Raise your hand. That's just fine. All around. Now you do this one thing. Now these people are going to stand here. A person will stand here, and they'll, I'll pray for them. And then that's the only thing I can do is pray for them. If Jesus would show me something to tell them, all right. But now you out there in the audience, do you think you got the faith that that woman had it, uh, with the blood issue? You, you think you had that kind of faith? Well, then, does the Bible say the Scripture must be fulfilled? Is he the high priest yet that can still be touched for the firm feeling of eternity? All right. Did he promise these things on earth that he would be with us and the very same things that he did, that if we do the same thing right. because of your faith touched him? Is that right? Well, then he's the same Lord Jesus. Now, if he is, about a dozen hands went up as sinners tonight that would accept him as their Savior. Now, that's his word. Here recently, down in Mexico, when a little dying baby, I think they got a baby here now, just put up here a baby with convulsion. We want to offer prayer for it just now. A little baby died in our meetings in Mexico. And way back there, or 20, 30 minutes later, they, the Lord... I went down, saw a vision over the baby, went down, laid hands on the child, and it come to life. And um, in India just recently, when a blind man, there, totally blind, received his sight, and all the people rallied to see the glory of God, thousands of them at one time received the Lord Jesus. Now they asked, I said, have prayer for this little baby. Let's just bow our heads for it, wherever it is. Now, Heavenly Father, we are your servants. This poor little child, Satan has afflicted it. And we know that you're God. You can do all things. And I believe, God, in you. We all believe in you, and I pray this prayer for the little thing. Whoever the little baby is, wherever it is at this time, if the mother's packing it outside or wherever it is, may the Holy Ghost that's in the building hover that baby, and may those convulsions leave it, and if the life has gone from it, may it return again just now, and may the baby live. Grant it, Father, and be well in Jesus Christ's name, who told this to us, if you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And we ask in Jesus' name for the baby. And Father, we pray that you'll be with the church, all of us tonight together. And manifest yourself, souls are at stake. I pray that you'll help me just now, and that I might yield myself to your spirit to do your work. For I ask it in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Now just be reverent. 
Everybody sit real quiet, listen, watch. <clears throat> this is a time when it's... Now, I have been speaking to you lengthy, right on most an hour. But now one word from God will do more than all I could say. Ministers might stand here which are far more able to preach the word than I, and still you can say that they really explained it nicely. That was wonderful. See? But just let him speak one time. That settled it. That settled it. Now, I only think to the newcomers, here's what happens, here's what it is. It's yielding to the Spirit of God. Just yield yourself. It's a way. Perhaps you'd never be able to do it. And probably I'd never be able to do what you do. But God has put us all in the church for some purpose, for his purpose. Now to you out there, you look this way, and in your heart say this, Lord Jesus, I, I love you. And I, I have no prayer card. I can't get up there tonight. But I want you to help me. And just to confirm my faith, will you have the man to turn around and tell me what's in my heart or what I need or what I should do or what I have done that's wrong or something? Will, will you tell me, Lord, if you will, I, I'll just be thankful to you. See? Now, if you'll do that, then God will do it. Of course, that's your maybe a few of them, then it gets so everybody start pulling like that, then I, I can't tell which is which. But if God would do it one time, that ought to settle it before the audience. Moses, God told Moses, said, go down, turn your hand into leprosy and heal it. And the children of Israel, do this before them, do a miracle with a stick, and they'll, they'll believe you. And Moses went and gathered the elders and done it one time, and that settled it. Everyone followed right on. That's all that has to be done. Every time Moses met an Israelite, say, wait a minute, wait a minute, are you an Israelite? Yeah, yeah, I'm an Israelite. Come here, I'll show what I can do. See? See my hand? See there? I heal it. See? Look at this stick. I can make it turn to a serpent, then turn it back. See what I can do? See, he didn't do that. He did it once. And if Jesus Christ raised from the dead and will do the same thing that he did then, he didn't break the bread four or five different times. He just broke it once. And they said, yes, the law. In a way, they went. Now, is this the... Now, if the organist will, just a moment till we kind of get, uh, I know something's going on, you see, and I, 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 you couldn't expect me to tell a congregation thing, certainly not, but I know something's going on, and I'm, um, I'm watching for it, so now let's just, in a spirit of worship, just think that one day an epileptic child frothing at the mouth. Jesus had called his disciples together and given power. Say, go out and heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out devils. Someone spoke to me the other day and said, the disciples never failed on any case. They failed on hundreds of them. Certainly they did. They just give them that power to come. Power is given. The church has it now, but it's your faith that controls that power. There's enough Holy Ghost believing people in here right now to turn the world upside down. Right. But you're afraid to turn it loose, that's all. So the disciples come down, and they had a little emotion, you know, and they began trying to cast this devil out, and they were probably hitting the floor and uh, screaming, and come out, devil, come out, devil, and all that getting the epileptic just kept on. Jesus come walking down from the mountain. The father run to him and said, Lord, if thou canst have mercy on us. Said, I got a boy, he's fiercely vexed with the devil. Said, he frosts at the mouth, he falls in the water, in the fire, the devil trying to destroy him. It's called devil then, it's called epilepsy now. All the same. So he said, and I took him to your disciples, and they couldn't cure him. They couldn't do nothing about it. And not ten days before there, Jesus told him to even give him power to raise the dead. You see? That's right. So said I brought him, and Jesus looked at his eyes and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long will I suffer? You bring him here. He said, Can thou believe? He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Jesus said, Then all things are possible to them that believe. You believe the same thing? Right. Then what must we say now? <laughs> Only believe. 
All right, everyone together now, slowly as we sing. Oh. What a beautiful picture. Here, it just so happens, we don't know, they bring those cards down, and they take a hundred of them and mix them all up together and pass them out to people. They take the card. When they do, then I might come down to meeting. Therefore, the boys who give out the cards, they don't know where the line's going to start from. They couldn't tell you. They might start from 100 and come backwards. You know that. might start anywhere. They don't know. The patient, they just come up here. That's all they know. And here tonight, a very dramatic scene has appeared. Here is a woman and a man standing again. And she being our sister, a colored woman, and me a white man. Just like it was at the days when Jesus sat at the well. And a woman of Samaria come out. And Jesus began to talk to her, and he said to her, Woman, bring me a drink. She said, The well is... The first thing she said, It's not customary for Jews and Samaritans to have any, any doings with each other, any dealing. See, there was a, a racial concern in that day. Like a lot of the countries got yet today, racial between the, the colored and the white. But Jesus strictly let her know, that was wrong. Sir, she was God's person in the hands of God to be manifested. It didn't make any difference whether a man's skin is white or black or yellow or brown or whatever it is. We're all children of God, all springs from Adam and Eve. That's where it started. The countries we lived in and the way it turned our skins has nothing to do with it. Not at all. Here stands tonight the same thing, a woman and a man. And now the woman, just as much strange to me, or are we strangers to one another, lady? We don't know each other. I don't know her, and she doesn't know me. No more than Jesus knew the woman or the woman knew Jesus. He's just the man. Jesus got to talking to her, didn't he? And he said, did you ever read the story, lady? Yes, I have. Yeah. said, he began to talk to her. And as soon as he talked to her, he said, bring me a drink. She said, well, the well's deep. She said, he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. He said, I'll give you water. You don't come here to draw. She said, when do you get this water and so forth? He said, the water that I give is water springing up into your soul. And said, our fathers worship in this mountain. You stay at Jerusalem. And the conversation went on for a while. Directly he found where her trouble was. She had a trouble, didn't she? And he said, go get your husband. How many of the audience knows that's true? Amen. Go get your husband. He found her trouble. That was her besetting trouble. This woman surely got one tonight or she wouldn't be here. If it isn't, it'll be told her. See? Go get your husband. That was her besetting trouble. She said, I don't have any. He said, that's right. She got five. Now listen close now to you newcomers. She looked at him. And she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things, he'll show us these things. Is that right? St. John, the fourth chapter, said Messiah will do these things. 
But who are you? He said, I'm he. That was the sign of the Messiah. Is that right? If that was the sign of the Messiah before the resurrection, before the crucifixion, rather, it's the same sign of the Messiah after the resurrection if he's the same. Is that right? Philip said, Nathaniel said to him, Rabbi, whence knowest thou me? He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree, he said, Thou art the Son of God. That was the sign, wasn't it? The Son of God. If that was the sign of the Son of God who knew where he'd come from or something about him, know his trouble, that was the sign of the Son of God today. Is that right? So now I'm speaking to the woman. If the Lord Jesus, the woman, witnesses herself by her hand up, and me with my hands up, and we've never seen one another, don't know one another, nothing about it. And now if Jesus Christ, by his grace, will come here and anoint me and let me know what that woman cheered for, or her trouble, or whatever it is, I don't know. But whatever it is, then to disbelieve that would be sin. Right. Amen. Then you have not one excuse. Now you see where I stand? See? Now why do I make them statements? Because he promised it to me. And I believe God. Amen. This is exactly the way he said it would be. Amen. I just want to talk to the woman just a moment. What did Jesus talk to the woman for? Catch her spirit. That's right. Catch her spirit. Now I just want to say a word to the woman. Maybe the Lord will show me something about her that I don't know. If he will, you can rejoice. If he doesn't, he's still raised from the dead anyhow. See? Right. If he doesn't, it's still raised from the dead anyhow. Thank you. If it is, it's just, his, it's just his mercy to do it. And I believe everyone down that line, I don't know, all you all strangers to me, raise your hands up if you are down along the line. Every one of them. All strangers. The only person I know in the building is Brother Madsen, this brother here, my son, and Mr. Woods. And there's Leo sitting there and Brother Amen oh, sitting right back out there. I don't even, here's Brother Beeler. I didn't even know you were here, Brother Beeler. And outside of that, I guess, is just about the only person that I know in the building. Yes, I know this brother here. He comes to Tabernacle. I don't know what, Smith, isn't it? Or something like that? Yeah. You're all strange to me. But now, to the woman. Now, isn't he lovely, sister? Yes, he He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the lily of the valley, the morning star. And I perceive right now that you are a Christian because your spirit begins to feel welcome. See? I know that somewhere standing near, he's standing because your spirit and the Holy Spirit, which is now on me, is becoming contact in each other. See? And now he can reveal to me and if he knows what your, your past has been, and you, you're the judge of that, and he tells you what your future will be, surely if he knows the past, he knows the future. If he had told the future before he told the past, then you'd, you could wonder what was going to happen or not. But if he would tell you what you already know has happened, then you, you know where the future is going to be right or not. See how he does it? He makes it real. There's no way out of it. But now, if the audience can, can still hear my voice, the woman seems to be moving away from me. She's going back. And I see her. She's standing in a building. She, no, she's before a doctor. And the doctor uh, says she has a, a tumor. And the tumor, he says, is a, a thyroid tumor. And he says that you must be operated on. Frankly, I see a shadow come over that. That was to be in the middle of last week. You was to be operated on. Yes. But the reason you didn't, you heard that I was coming here, and you come and wanted me to pray for you before this could take place. Thus saith the law. That's true. Our Heavenly Father, I lay my hands upon the woman to bless her 
and may God's great blessing rest upon her. For you said, These signs shall follow them that believe if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you now, sister. May his grace ever be with you. Do you now believe? Just have faith. If you can have faith, you can believe. And you can have what you ask for. Is that the lady that's sitting there was on the platform just now? That didn't look like the lady I saw in a vision here just then on. That appeared. It's not. You went down there with the anointing on you and you sat down by the lady sitting on this side of you. Yes. She's bothered, got back trouble. The lady sitting next to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now you, with your handkerchief at your eyes, lay your hand over on your sister there, on this side of you, this side, with the back trouble. Oh, Jesus, Son of God, thou who can know the woman touched you, I pray for her healing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I go home in peace, sister. Your faith has made you whole. Have faith and believe in God. The Bible said, All things are possible to them that believe. Is that right? Another lady. Just this way, sister, over here by the microphone. Now we're strange to each other, too. Seeing that you are a um, colored lady and me a white man, again, the same thing rises. I like the face of you people. In your early days, back in the slavery time, you were beat around and pushed around. But in there, the inheritance, even from your father, has given you faith. Humble, simple faith. I'm a stranger. I don't know you. But one of your brothers, when Jesus was up going up Calvary with a load on his back, he fell under the load. His body was weak. He was beaten. And Simon helped him bear the cross. Don't you believe he'll help one of his children standing here? If you only knew, my sister, that the very Christ that he helped him bear the cross, his spirit is right here by your side. I am your brother. He is your God and your Savior. You are suffering with a condition that you're upset about. It's a tumor condition, and you're all undecided about it. You have a lady's trouble also, causes you trouble. And if God will tell me where that place is, will it help your faith just a little while he's at you? Then your side, right side. <laughs> you believe now? Dear God, I bless this woman that you will help her and let her live and give her a long life and may the eternal blessings rest upon her and heal her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, lady. If thou canst believe, don't feel bad. If you'd been in her fix, you'd probably holler too. She just, catching here, she was under such an anointing, she couldn't say nothing then, but just as soon as it lifted from her, she'd give vent to her feelings. He said, if thou canst believe.
lady, the white lady sitting right here. You're praying too, aren't you? I don't know you. I've never seen you. As far as I know in my life, you're a stranger to me, but your faith has contacted him. You're a Christian, a believer, and you're suffering with a headache. Keeps coming on you. You're not from this country. You come from the north, coming south, driving this away. And you live on something like a farm. There's a lot of short stuff, a sweet, wheat farm. That is right. Do you believe him? It's your faith that's contacted him. You believe him now with all your heart. What I tell you is the truth. If it is, raise your hand. Now you go home and be well. May they leave you. In Jesus Christ's name. How do you do, lady? Now, this won't hurt you. It's the Holy Spirit. But such a wonderful anointing. Oh, how dark it turns around this woman standing before me. I see her moving in some to doctor's office, hospital, but they keep shaking their head. They don't know what's wrong with her. That is right. That's right. But he does know. <laughs> Your main trouble is a nervous. You just, it's a, the spasm-like in the nerves that just cause you to feel horrible all the time. They can't find it because it's a devil. And their instruments won't show a spirit. But he might have hid from the x-ray, but he can't hide from God. He looks right through him. You believe? Come here. Oh, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, your beloved doctors has tried to find him, but he's hid. But he can't hide from you. Come out of the woman, thou evil spirit that's doing this thing. And Jesus Christ rebuke thee. And may she go in peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Look, lady, you don't know me. But you've had an up and down life all the time. You've always desired a deeper life with God. You've desired a deeper study with God to live for Him because you've had your troubles. That couldn't be hidden. It's not for this audience to know. That's between you and God and I. Will you take my advice as this prophet? You go out of here not happy. Go out singing. Go out rejoicing. Forget it ever happened to you. You'll be well. Amen. Now, if He knows what you have been, He surely knows what you will be. If thou canst believe. Thou canst receive. Amen. Just be real reverend. Don't doubt. Now, you believe, lady? Only God alone will know. I don't know you. I've never seen you. But he knows you. The vision keeps leaving me when I speak to you. I everyone looked and prayed. Don't have to close your eyes. Just be in prayer. You believe me to be his servant? You believe Jesus raised from the dead? You believe the spirit that's here between us now, that you know there's something besides your brother. If you're aware of that, raise your hand so the audience will know it. That's the Holy Spirit. I don't know you. Never seen you. But somehow I can't hold the vision to you. It moves away from you.
I see great high mountains raising up. There's snow over the top of them. And there's a city that's at the bottom. It's a big city. And there's a man there, which is your father. And that man's in Denver, Colorado. I passed through. And he's got heart trouble. Suffering with his heart, smothering. And you're his daughter standing here for your father. Oh God, have mercy. And I pray that you'll grant the request of this young woman. May your Holy Spirit move out and grant to her this blessing as I lay my hands upon her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Don't fear. Have faith. Are you believing? You made a contact to him, sister. I didn't see it, just what it was. But the light was hanging over you. The lady says, the elderly lady sitting there, yes. Look at me. You believe? You believe he'll heal those veins, those bear coist veins? To both of you, both of you sitting there, you guys both have bear coist veins. Just both praying for the same thing. Raise your hands if that's true. <laughs> All right. Now I have faith and believe. You can have what you ask for, if thou canst believe. Amen. Just pulling from everywhere now. Little lady, sitting right over the back of this boy sitting here. I see you moving from a table. You're suffering stomach trouble. Sitting right back here, looking at me with the hat. You believe in Jesus Christ make you well? You accept it? If you do, the little white flowers over top of your hat there, yes. Your face, sister. Nervous and upset caused you to have this gastric condition. Don't fear. It's gone from you now. Your face make you well. Only believe. Have faith in God. The colored lady dressed in white. You was praying. Don't move, you disturb me. Be real reverent. Sit still just a few minutes. They'll take me. Don't move. Something was happening. Someone moved or got up. Don't do it, please. Can you stand still a few minutes longer? We'll hurry. Someone, there's a vision or someone, where was it at? This ever who you was I was talking to, be in prayer again. See? All right, be real reverent. Which is this? I'm not beside myself, sir. But this is a, a dimension, two worlds. See, in our presence, we're standing here looking at one another's man. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You're a total stranger to me. That's right, isn't it? That's right. If that's right, raise up your hand. I don't know you. Never seen you. But we're now, we're standing here looking at one another. So by the, your features, your face, i never seen you. And we're strange to one another. But there's another world just out here where the supernatural is. That's where God lives. That's where the Holy Spirit is. He knows me and he knows you. Now, I'm just your brother. He's your Savior, your God. And you're here for something I don't know. But he knows. I don't. If he'll reveal to me what you're here for, will you accept it? You will? Well, let's settle it with the audience. <coughs> Perhaps I speak to the man a little. Just talk to him. The more you talk to him, the more he'd say. But I try to conserve 
reserve, rather. Excuse me, I, I'm not beside myself, but it's anointing of the Holy Ghost, and you're just drawing the life out of me, you see? I, I, I've, now I'm yielded to him, you see? And it's not me doing this, it's you. You're doing it. It's God's gift. No, I'm not his gift. This is his gift, and it's you drawing from it. Jesus didn't know the woman, know nothing about her. She just touched him with her faith. That's what you're doing. There's so many of you pulling now, and the spirits get me to a place where I just can hardly see. If one person made virtue go out of the Son of God, what about me, a sinner saved by grace? What one person will do? There's none of these people. I don't know this man. It'll take his faith to do it. Not mine. Yeah. Now, my brother, I, if I could help you, if you're in trouble or somebody else is in trouble that you're standing for, if it's sickness, finances, or whatever it is, and you're in trouble, and I could help you and wouldn't do it, I'd be a horrible person. I'm not here to do nothing but to help you. And the only thing I can do is just yield myself that your faith. Now, if you're sick, I can't heal you. If your parents are sick or your wife is sick or somebody else, I couldn't do that. See? It just has to take faith to do it. But the Holy Spirit will reveal it to let you know that he's risen from the dead. And every word of the Bible is true. The scripture's got to be fulfilled. And it is fulfilled before your eyes tonight. The things that I do, said Jesus, shall you also. Even more, not just one woman, but more. The gift was not given to me for a public like this. You see, just one move disturbs it. See, is the Holy Spirit so sensitive? You, you're sure you don't. Will you just keep your seat just for a moment or two longer? Please don't get up. See, it just keeps moving me. Just be real reverent. Now, this, uh, the anointing's getting so deep in the audience. It's so sensitive. Wish I could explain it. I can't. Wish you could see what I'm looking at even. But I can't do it. Can't explain it. Now, for the sakes of this man. You have... Uh, I see you in a... You've been in a service... And you're having some kind of like scientist trouble. That's right. Came from my yeah. service. Yes. You're getting chills. That's right. Malaria. That's right. Absolutely. I've had it since 1943. I, you are. I've, you are a very sick person, and you're. You are studying in some sort of a, a course or school. It's a Bible that's course. Right. You're learning. To, uh, to be a preacher. That's right. You're studying to be a preacher. That's right. Yes. Sir. And right. you are not from this country. You come from uh, another place. It's a you're around a place called uh, like Massachusetts or somewhere That's right. up in there. That is right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's and right. your last name is Smith. That's right. Your first name is Ralph. <laughs> your middle name is Lancaster. That's right. That's right. That is true. You believe? I do. Then come here. Then in the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, I bless thee, my brother, for the healing of thy body. Amen. God be with you, my brother. Give his blessings to you and don't doubt but believe. Can you believe? When I said something about sinus to the man, you thought about it, didn't you? You also have arthritis, don't you? Sitting right there, the little lady with the black hat on. The lady sits next to you has arthritis also. That's right. You believe? Put your hands on each other. Oh, Jesus, Son of God. Heal, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Have faith. Believe.
You think God heal your back trouble? A colored lady with a white hat and a white blouse. You believe it? All right, accept it then. You shall have what you ask for. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Highest nervousness, oh my. But Jesus can heal you, can't he? You believe he does? But you can go along now and go will be well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make God pray. How do you do? Very sick, knee, stiffing up. But God knows all about it. Can heal you this arthritis, you know, make you well. You believe that? Raise up your feet like this. Say, Jesus, I now accept it. That's right. Now go off the platform rejoicing. Say, praise be to God for healing you. You believe? You're ready for an operation. A tumor. That's right. Do you believe Jesus Christ can heal it? Then go and receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this blessing. Amen. Have faith. You know, Emmanuel bled one day and his blood came out of his body to give a blood transfusion for you to take away the anemia, make you well. You believe that? Would you accept it? Then in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you receive it. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You believe, lady, with all your heart? You'd like to go eat again like you used to, wouldn't you? Stomach trouble and all leave you in your nervousness and the lady's trouble. Wouldn't you like to be well again? Well, you believe? Then go do it. As her heart's desire, God grant it to you, my sister. May you be made well. Amen. Have faith. Heart trouble's a horrible thing. But Jesus is a powerful thing. Do you believe? In Jesus' name. I bless you, my sister. May you live and serve God all your life. Amen. Go and believe now. Don't doubt. Now, when I said that to her, you had the same thing. But do you believe that God will make you well just the same as he could her? It's a nervous condition, you too, it makes you that way. When you lay down, it's worse than when you're standing up. See? Because it causes gases to form and press up on it. He's sure to make you well. You believe? In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I bless this woman for her healing. Amen. Have faith. Don't doubt. How do you do? You believe me to be his prophet, his servant? You do? My, when a person can't eat, it's hard, isn't it? Makes you nervous too, doesn't it? The old gastric ulcer, you know, that causes your food to ferment and sour and everything. That's what you got. But Jesus is sure to make you well. You believe it? If I will bless you, Jesus said, whatever you bind on the earth, I'll bind it in heaven. Is that right? So for your healing, I'll lay my hands up on you and i bind this nervous spirit has upset her stomach in this condition in the name of Jesus Christ and she'll be well for the kingdom of God's sake. Amen. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Well, you have a nervous heart. But God can make you well. You believe that, don't you? You believe I'll, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them at least. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? Then I do this in obedience to his commandments. In the name of Jesus Christ, for your healing. Amen. Have faith now and believe with all your heart. God grant it. Of course, anyone can see there's a blind woman. <coughs> Won't you bow your head? And cursed be the person that will raise her eyes and look this way until they hear me say, raise your eyes. And I have faith and let me alone with the woman. Jesus led a man outside the city. 
I don't have to see miracles to believe him, but I believe in miracle raising God. Don't no one move. And you can suit yourself after I've said this. Keep your heads bowed till you hear my voice tell you to raise your head. Sister, blind man sat by the gate one day begging. Jesus came along. God bless your heart. You want to see for the glory of God. Will you give God glory? I want you to close the lids over your eyes. Like the rest of the audience. And only myself and the Holy Spirit who is supernatural stands present. I was given a vision a few nights ago concerning something. That's the reason I said, Cursed be the person that would look this away or open their eyes before I ask for it. If you will believe, the blind spirit that's blinded those eyes will have to leave. Sight will appear through them. Now have faith. Thou God. Who made the human eye, who has mercy on the blind, have mercy on this poor woman who staggers in darkness. Oh, Jesus, as you were going up Golgotha, the blood running down your back and your robe turned into one great bloody splotch, the crown over your head. Bleeding, your blood was dragging down, the cross was dragging out your bloody footprints. You fell. Simon picked up the cross and helped you bear it. God hears one of his children moping along in darkness tonight, aged. Doctors can do no more. But you're here, God. Won't you have faith? Won't you have pity? Won't you give me faith that what I'm asking for I get? Give her faith, Lord. May the daylight break through those darkened shadows yonder. May the anointed high priest walk down into there, packing his own blood. And I rebuke this blind spirit on this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, I don't desire miracles. You said a weak and adulterous generation seeketh after such. And we don't seek after miracles. But that this audience tonight may know beyond their shadow of doubt that you're the resurrected Jesus Christ. That you still can give sight to the blind. And that your works are true. I ask for sight to peep through these eyes that she might see. And believing with all my heart, I go forward now to challenge this spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I keep your eyes closed, lady. I'm only talking to the lady at the platform. I'm doing this beyond a vision. And now, without a shadow of doubt, I'm speaking only to the lady in front of me, not the audience. I want you to slowly open your eyes, looking towards me, believing with all your heart that the Spirit of God is sure giving you sight. See my hand? There you have your sight. Put your hand on my nose. He has given you your sight. The audience may raise their head. The blind now sees. Count the lights along over there. Point your finger to them. She's going to count the lights. Come over here. Listen. Let up here. How many men sitting there? 
three, she said, put your, put your finger on my nose. If you desire your healing, raise up your hands to God. Hear Jesus, author of life, send your spirit upon this people that's now waiting. Heal them, Lord. And I pray that you'll give each of them their healing just now. I cast every evil power of the devil away from this audience. Jesus, 